Hi, everyone. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today for this exciting webinar. I am Jeanette Quick, Head of Policy for Gusto. Gusto is a people platform for small businesses, and we represent more than 100,000 small businesses across the country. We are proud to be a voice for small business and to advocate to help them survive the pandemic. This is why I'm so excited to host this webinar today, where we will hear from a key policymaker that helped provide a critical lifeline to small businesses over the last year, Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy, and we'll hear what's next for small business. I will be joined throughout this program by two experts, Shelly Abril, Gusto's payroll tax compliance lead, and Jeffrey Rapp, senior advisor to Representative Murphy. We will hear from Representative Murphy on her work on the Employer Retention Tax Credit, ERTC, and about how this helps small businesses and we will reserve time to answer some of the top questions that we've heard from businesses about ERTC. So let's get started. We are so pleased to have Representative Murphy with us today. A bit about her background. She represents Florida's seventh congressional district in the House of Representatives. She has been influential in the House Ways and Means Committee as a member of the Subcommittee on Trade and the Subcommittee on Worker and Family Support. Before Congress, Representative Murphy was a businesswoman, college instructor, and national security specialist. And she is the first Vietnamese American woman ever elected to Congress, which is personally very special to me as I am myself a Vietnamese American. Representative Murphy was the first member of Congress to recommend expanding ERTC and was crucial in its inclusion in the CARES Act, which was enacted in late March and helped thousands of small businesses across America. Since then, she has been a leader in the efforts to expand the tax credit and has worked towards building a bipartisan coalition to support, support it. Representative Murphy was pivotal in ERTC's inclusion in the second COVID relief package that passed on December 27, 2020. Representative, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much um, for the kind introduction, Jeanette. And um, thank you to the entire team at Gusto for inviting me to speak uh, today about the expanded employee retention tax credit. Um, you know, I, as you all know, you may know, the ERTC is a refundable, advanceable credit taken against payroll taxes. And it's essentially designed to encourage businesses of all sizes to retain their employees in active or furloughed status during the COVID-19 crisis rather than laying them off. And, you know, to be honest with you, I've been in Congress since 2017, um, just long enough to understand that legislating is the ultimate team sport. And we only got the ERTC into the March 2020 CARES Act because of teamwork. And we only got the credit extended and expanded um, for another six months um, to the in the end of year COVID relief bill because of teamwork. And teamwork in Congress means um, being bipartisan and bicameral. And this was an effort that was both bipartisan and bicameral from start to finish. Um, it also was an effort that enjoyed significant support from private sector stakeholders who weighed in with congressional leadership at the right times. And we were able to get this over the finish line because we did have a broad coalition behind it. And it's really, in my opinion, uh, an example of how legislative uh, process should work. And I was incredibly proud to have spearheaded this effort in the House. But I also know that legislating is just half the battle. Now that we've gotten into law, the other half is implementation. So I've now turned my attention to making sure that businesses and tax preparers um, are aware of the ERTC and the details for taking advantage of it so that we can get uptake as high as possible and help as many workers and businesses as possible. And so my, my office is planning on doing numerous events like this one. Deeply grateful to be here with you for this one. We've, um, we've already also spoken to the main trade organization representing CPAs, and they're pushing out a lot of educational material for their members. And we're really trying to put some pressure on the IRS to update the ERTC guidance on its website as soon as possible. Um, we want it to reflect the enhancements that we were able to pass last year. And finally, we're pushing Treasury and SBA to do a public education campaign with a real focus on small businesses as they're required to do by the new COVID relief bill. And so if you'll just indulge me for a minute, um, I'll give you a quick recap of the legislative path we took to getting uh, the ERTC into law and then provide you a little summary of the new credit and how you might avail yourselves of it. So back in early March of last year, I was the first member of Congress to propose using the ERTC. 
It was an existing but little known policy tool that Congress had used to help um, the economies of US states and territories that had been hurt by natural disasters like hurricanes. Coming from Florida, as you might be aware, I'm, I'm very aware of, of this, um, this little policy tool. And so I worked really closely with the Ways and Means Committee, um, where I'm a member, to get the ERTC included in the CARES Act. It was one of the final things added to the bill um, following some last minute negotiations with the Senate Finance Committee and the Treasury Department. And while the ERTC, the version of the ERTC that emerged from the negotiations on CARES was good, we knew it had to be stronger for it really to have a, a significant impact. Um, and so it needed to be dialed up um, so that it really gave businesses the incentive they needed to retain workers instead of laying them off. And then secondly, it needed to work in conjunction with the payroll protection program. Um, the CARES Act required businesses to make a binary choice. You could either take the PPP or the ERTC, but you couldn't do both. And that never really made sense to me um, because it, it, I think it forced people into a decision that resulted in low usage of the ERTC by smaller firms. And so um, right after the CARES Act passed, I filed bipartisan legislation to extend and expand the ERTC into 2021 and to enable firms to claim both the ERTC and the PPP as long as they didn't double dip for the same period of time. And I think this was really important because it was clear um, that the pandemic was going to be with us for a while as uh, the economic impacts were going to continue to be with us. And so this bill passed the House on two occasions first in the HEROES Act, and then again on a slimmed down version of HERO. Um, but this was before the November 2020 election. And you know, to be honest with you, Congress just couldn't get their act together to pass another bill. But once the election was over, the political winds began to shift a bit and the bill um, and, a, and a comprehensive bill became possible. But we had a really big problem from an ERTC perspective. The framework that had become the final bill was a $908 billion package put together by moderate senators of both parties. And it didn't include our expanded ERTC, even though it had widespread support. So that kind of put us behind the eight ball, but not totally out of the game. And so we went into overdrive, we pushed hard on House and Senate leadership and a lot of folks in the private sector um, and advocacy community made calls and sent emails. And incredibly, the final package included a $20 billion expansion of the credit for the next six months. So, um, you know, it's clear that ERTC was one of the last items that was included, but it was definitely a relief to me that it was included. Um, it, you know, pardon the Orlando reference, but it was a bit like a Disney ride that makes you laugh, but also kind of feel a little sick at times. So um, anyways, glad that it's in there. Um, and so the way it works, it's a payroll tax credit for wages paid by an employer whose business is either fully or partially suspended by a government order, or that is experiencing a significant reduction in business as compared to 2019. And really, again, the goal was to keep workers tethered to their jobs um, by giving extra resources to the businesses, the employers, to keep people on payroll rather than laying them off. And this ensures that people continue to receive a paycheck, um, stay tethered to their employer-sponsored um, health insurance and other benefits. And according to a recent report by the Joint Committee on Taxation, we expect that 13 million American workers will benefit from the expanded credit with a majority of these workers um, working at small and mid-sized businesses. And there are some differences between CARES for Act um, for 2020 and the expanded version for 21. But let me just focus on the expanded versions. You're welcome to ask uh, about 2020 if you still haven't um, if you're looking at filing um, those, uh, that filing for 2020, um, my, uh, my tax um, advisor is staying on, Jeff Rapp, and he can answer some of those questions. But for 2021, the expanded version, the credit is equal to 70% of qualified wages up to 10,000 per employee per quarter. And so this is claimed against employment taxes with excess amounts refundable. 
Um, the credit is available to employers that have um, fully or have had to fully or partially suspend operations due to a government order or that have a 20% decline in gross receipts compared to the same quarter in 2019. So even though it's 2021, the look back is to 2019, pre-pandemic. Um, also for employers with 500 or fewer employees, the credit applies to wages paid to all workers. Um, and this isn't true for larger employers, um, defined as uh, employers that have more than 500 employees, where the credit only applies to wages paid to furloughed workers. And then finally, one of the most important changes was making the ERTC available to businesses that also received a PPP loan. So not only did we make this change for 21, um, 2021, but it also retroactively applies to 2020. So for example, if you use your PPP loan for eight weeks in 2020, you could use the ERTC for the weeks um, outside of the eight weeks you applied the PPP loan to, and it could cover down um, on, on your 2020 payroll. So with that, I'll stop there so that you can hear from experts about the granular details of the, the credit. But um, please keep my office informed if the IRS guidance is unclear and we're happy to push them to add or clarify information. We're hopeful this is a little more um, streamlined than the PPP because it's a program that existed before this pandemic crisis. It's been used in the past and it rides on the same infrastructure that you use for your payroll taxes. And so we're not building new infrastructure for this relationship or to implement this. And we're also not using a third party intermediary like a bank to make sure that you get the, um, if, you're, um, if you uh, qualify it for the refundable, advanceable um, cash that, that might be there. So um, we may be looking to extend this credit beyond the first two quarters of this year. So let me know if you think there needs to be tweaks to the credit and we can, we can improve it again. You know, one of the truisms about um, legislating is that very seldomly do laws come out of the chute um, completely perfect. Uh, there's always implement implementation issues, and we, as members of Congress, really benefit from hearing from you, folks who are on the ground trying to um, implement these uh, laws. Um, hearing from you and getting your feedback can only help us make it better. And so I welcome you reaching out to my office. And again, um, Jeff is going to stay on uh, along with some of the other experts answering any other questions you have on the uh, details of this. But thank you again for taking time to be with me, um, letting me speak to you all. And I certainly hope that um, many of your members, many of the folks on this call find the ERTC um, uh, useful in helping their businesses through a difficult economic uh, moment. Thank you, Cong Congresswoman. Uh, very interesting insights. Thank you for taking us on, on your journey as well as uh, you know advocating for small businesses. I certainly know a number of our customers have taken advantage of the RTC and, and really uh, small businesses across the country. So thank you for all that. Um, and for those listening, um, her website is murphy.house.gov if you want to reach out with any follow-up uh, questions. Um, I would now like to turn it over to Gusto's payroll tax compliance lead, Shelly Abril, who will walk us through a bit more detailed um, how the ERTC supports small businesses. Shelly, take it away. Hi there, everybody, and thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, today. Um, as was explained, the ERTC, it's a refundable tax credit that you get to apply against your federal employment taxes or payroll taxes. Um, the new law extended the credit from, it was set to expire uh, December 31st, and it's been um, extended through uh, June 30th of 2021. Um, the following changes were, um, were uh, made um, to improve the program. Um, so initially, um, as the Congresswoman explained, um, the qualified wages were up to $10,000 per employee per quarter, and that's been uh, improved, so it's um, I'm sorry, yes, from 10,000 per year, and now it's 10,000 per quarter. So two quarters so far uh, in 2021 have been approved for the credit. And so you can take, you can um, have qualified wages up to $10,000 per quarter. So $20,000 for the first half of the year. Um, the credit also was expanded initially, it was 50% um, um, 
in 2020, and it's been expanded up to 70% of the employees' qualified wages. Um, it reduced the qualified gross receipts decline. So you, in 2020, you had to prove that you had 50% um, gross receipts decline over 2019. And um, that requirement has been reduced. It's easier to qualify now for this um, credit. Uh, it's been declined to 20%. Um, additionally, going back to 2020, so those are all set to start effective or they started January 1st of this year, 2021. Um, some of the changes were affected um, or applied retroactively. Um, as the Congresswoman stated um, last year, you had to sort of make that decision. And we saw a lot of our customers really struggle with that. Do I use PPP or I'm thinking about PPP? So what does that mean? Can I not participate in ERC? And you had to make that um, really, really tough decision about whether or not you go for one program or the other. And um, this year passed, but for uh, retroactive last uh, to 2020, you can go back and amend um, for any periods where you qualify for ERC and didn't and and also applied for PPP, but um, you just can't use it for the same wages. You can't double dip. Um, and then also uh, the new bill clarified that um, group health plans can be uh, considered qualified wages, even if you didn't pay the employee for that period. Um, their health plan expenses can be considered qualified wages. And so I think we're going to open up for um, talking through some of the common questions we're receiving. And so Jeanette, I'm going to throw it back to you to guide us through the FAQ process uh, here for this uh, session. Thanks so much, Shelly. That was awesome. Um, as Shelly mentioned, we've had a number of questions come in from our customers about ERTC. We will get to as many as we can. For those that we do not get to, please check out our site at gusto.com or contact Representative Murphy at murphy.house.gov. My first question is for Jeff, uh, Representative Murphy's senior advisor. I know one question top of mind for many of our customers and for small businesses across the country is what's next? What relief do you think is coming to help the many small businesses that are still struggling? Thanks, Jeanette. Uh, it's, a, it's a great question and it's something that, you know, no one should believe that just because Congress passes one bill or two bills or the, the one that we did in December that we're sort of done legislating and, and we think it's everything is fine. I think you saw with uh, President Biden's election and his new sort of build back better COVID relief plan that he is um, advocating for right now. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done and there's still a lot of economic relief that needs to uh, be addressed for, for individuals and for small businesses. So, uh, you know, right now on the Hill, things are still just in the early stages of kind of getting there act together and we're putting some of uh, the president's ideas into legislative text so that we can uh, debate that and kind of see what the path forward is and negotiate with with Senate and, and other House members. But so not a lot of specifics. Uh, he has a he has a plan that he's put out um, that is very much focused on building uh, the communities and supporting local communities and, and making uh, small businesses a sort of central component of that through some of the existing tools. We've seen grant programs, maybe some additional PPP money, some additional tax relief. We're not uh, sure how that will kind of, the details are still being ironed out, but it is a it is a strong priority and something that we will be looking at, I think in the very near future, we just have to sort of figure out uh, what, what that path looks like, but small business is definitely uh, top of mind. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, that was very helpful. And we will certainly have some some ideas for you on, on additional small business relief. Um, and uh, we really, really um, pride ourselves on, on being a voice for small business. So there are folks out there listening that have other ideas on, on what you need to see uh, to survive the crisis. Please reach out to, to me, Jeanette.quick at gusto.com. Um, I want to turn now to Shelly. Um, I have a question here for you, uh, which is that many employers want to understand their options if they didn't apply for ERTC in 2020 because they thought they were ineligible because of participation in PPP. What are their options now if they qualify under the new law? Yeah, they have a couple of options. Um, one that was just released actually yesterday from IRS um, and doesn't actually offer a ton of time, but there's an alternative. Um, so IRS released yesterday that employers um, can claim uh, a second and thir or third quarter of 2020 credit for ERC on their fourth quarter uh, return for 2020. And the fourth quarter return 
is due uh, on February 1st. So that, that deadline is right around the corner, which doesn't give a ton of time for folks to take advantage. But if you haven't yet filed your returns for uh, fourth quarter 2020 to IRS, your 941, um, you can still, um, if you know how much you qualify for, for ERC, you can go ahead and amend your fourth, I'm sorry, file on your original fourth quarter return, the credit. Um, if that doesn't give you enough time, which I assume that will be the case for most employers, um, or if you've already filed your fourth quarter return, um, then there is an option to go back and amend your um, second or third quarter return um, to apply the appropriate credit um, to the appropriate quarter. Um, so they are allowing employers to go back and take advantage of the ERC amounts that they're eligible for, um, even if they did partake um, in the PPP program. Um, and so that would be done through amendments and then you would receive a, a refund for the amount of the ERC you were approved for. Thanks, Shelly. That was very helpful, very actionable. Um, my next question is for Jeff. Um, what would you say were the biggest changes between 2020 and 20, 2021 and why did Congress make those changes? Yeah, thanks. I, I think we've heard a couple of times sort of what the credit uh, is now in terms of the 10,000 per quarter per employee and the 70%. Really, what we were able to do was to kind of keep the same, um, for lack of a better word, dials of the credit and just try to make them more generous and more applicable to as many um, businesses as possible and to just increase those thresholds. So each one of those little pieces of the puzzle, whether it's how, you know, how much wages, so instead of 10,000 for the year, it's 10,000 per quarter, whether it was 50% credit, it's now a 70% credit, um, you, the, the business size from the small, you know, who qualifies as a small business from 100 to, to 500, each one of those was just really designed to try to impact as many uh, people as possible. And so, you know, it kind of became a budget constraint, you know, how, we, we personally, the, the congressman had introduced a bill that was even more generous than that. But obviously, with legislating, you have to compromise uh, to get what you can across the finish line. So uh, those were all the little places that we could to try to, to, to make it even more impactful uh, to small businesses. And then as well as what the congressman mentioned in terms of the interaction with PPP loans, we never quite understood why that was originally done and, and it didn't make a lot of sense. So that was, I think, another cornerstone of the changes we wanted to see was allowing small businesses not to have to make that choice between a PPP loan or ERC. We think getting as much help as possible uh, for all the wages and all the sort of relief that we could do. So I think making both retroactive to 2020, as well as, you know, the going forward of 2021, that you can do both PPP loan and ERC was one of the biggest changes. Great. Thanks, Jeffrey. Um, I certainly know that uh, the question came up for us quite a lot about uh, the intersection of PPP and ERTC. So I think the change was a good one. Um, my next question uh, for Shelly, I, I want to make sure that um, we, we, Think about those those folks that have that PPP loan and are are have top of mind forgiveness. Um, something that I know a lot of businesses are still still have questions about is how the forgiveness process works and how how do they make sure that um, they're on track for forgiveness. Um, so a question related to this intersection between PPP and ERTC: Can my company get the employee retention payroll tax credit for 2020 if we intend to apply for forgiveness on our 2020 PPP loan? but the loan has not yet been forgiven. Shelley? Um, well, that, I guess the short answer is no. Um, you, there's no double dipping. So if you expect that you're going to be forgiven for, um, for the, uh, the wages that were paid for by PPP funds, um, I would suggest not claiming the ERTC credit. Um, if, however, later your, your forgiveness um, request has been denied or, or you are only forgiven for part of the loan, you can go back then and amend and claim the ERTC for what was not forgiven through PPP. Um, so my suggestion, just so you don't end up accidentally double dipping is wait until you, if you believe you're gonna be forgiven on your PPP loan, which most of the PPP loans are forgiven. Um, if you believe that that will happen or, or you have strong suspicion that it will, um, then I would just suggest waiting if, uh, for whatever reason, your full loan isn't forgiven, then you can go back and amend and, and get um, the benefits of the ERTC program retroactively uh, through the amendment process I mentioned earlier. Great, thanks so much, Shelly. Um, and you touched on this a little bit um, on the retroactive piece of it. Um, 
Jeffrey, are there any other changes um, that you think are important to highlight that were applied retroactively to 2020 and how those might benefit small businesses? Um, I think the short answer is no. The, the retroactive stuff was really sort of technical corrections and clarifications of, of sort of guidelines that the IRS had already put out there. You know, one of the big ones was the healthcare sort of expense and, and for, for for local workers and stuff. So that was already being taken care of by the IRS uh, on their own, but we sort of made that law. So I think the really the big piece was the uh, the retroactive PPP um, interaction, and you know, and, and just to add another little you know layer of color or complication is the the loan forgiveness is one process, the amending of the ERC paperwork can be another process, and you know, really. <laughs> talk to the, the you know tax professionals to make sure you're maximizing each one of those pieces because you know one employer or employee I mean can sort of count for both you know PPP forgiveness as well as ERC if the right conditions are met so it's it gets into the weeds but you know the whole point would be to try to maximize both PPP forgiveness on every available dollar as well as you know any remaining stuff that is eligible for your your employees uh, with the ERC so long as you're again not sort of double dipping Thanks, Jeffrey, very helpful. Um, and one more question for Shelly, and then we will wrap up here. Um, Shelly, what if my credit is more than what I owe in, in taxes? Okay, uh, yeah, if your credit's um, greater than the amount that you owe for taxes, um, and you, um, so then you don't essentially get the full benefit of uh, the credit live while your taxes are being paid throughout the quarter. The way Gusto has done this is we'll apply the credit sort of as the quarter proceeds. Um, so that there's no, um, we're not paying taxes and you have to wait for a refund. But there are some cases where that credit is larger than the tax owed for the quarter. <clears throat> and so um, you can reflect the difference of um, what you haven't claimed in that quarter on the 941, the IRS uh, quarterly form 941. And IRS will go ahead and issue a refund at the end of the quarter. IRS also created a process. Um, they, they stood up a new form called the Form 7200. That's not for 2021. That's, that was uh, launched in 2020 and is still active for 2021. But an employer can also request an advance refund. Um, so if they're really in a, in a tough spot and needing to get the money earlier than uh, waiting for a refund at the end of the quarter, they can request that um, refund uh, in advance. Um, so you would use what's called the form 7200 um, that's out on the IRS website. And um, if you're a Gusto client or really with any other payroll service provider, you would need to communicate that to your payroll service provider that you requested a refund already so that they don't ask for a second refund for you for the same dollars. Great. Thank you for that, Shelly. Uh, uh, certainly very helpful and detailed. Uh, that was an amazing session. We are at, about at time. Thank you to Jeffrey, Shelley, and Congresswoman Murphy for joining us today. I certainly learned a lot about ERTC. I hope you did too. Uh, you can catch the recording of this webinar at gusto.com. And for more questions about ERTC and all things COVID relief and small businesses, please sign up for Gusto's newsletter at gsto.com, SMB News. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Stay safe out there. Thank you. Bye.